welcome to the last uh, last talk. It is the third CIPAS talk. Now we will focus on cybersecurity and how we implement the new cybersecurity requirement on CPS. Uh, I am with Anguère Andori Boucourt and I'm Mathieu Dupré. We both come from the same company, Savoir Faire Linux. Savoir Faire Linux is an expert company around open source and we assist uh, industrial companies around uh, to use open source uh, software. We are uh, involved in CPAS since the, the beginning uh, and we are both maintainers and contributors of CPAS. The CPAS project uh, is uh, basically uh, an hypervisor platform. Yeah, it uh, has to be run in uh, power substation, electric power substation. It has to, the goal is to replace a physical machine by virtual machine to gain in flexibility. But uh, the drawback is now uh, a parameter uh, is a point of failure. So we have to very uh, reinforce, enforce the security of the hypervisor. To do, to do that, we, we search for uh, cyber security requirements. We want uh, the, our cyber security uh, guide. Uh, our very, we search for an implemented uh, oriented guide because there is a lot of guide which is more high level and not very Linux specific. So, so we want an oriented, uh, implemented oriented guide, Linux specific, but not distribution specific. Uh, distribution specific. We want it uh, distribution agnostic because uh, CPAS uh, use both distribution, Debian, and uh, custom Yocto distribution. And we want the, the, the guide to, to be free and safe and uh, and uh, cover all the, the, the CPAS uh, subject, uh, network, uh, system handling, uh, kernel handling, and so on. So introducing the ANSI BP28, it comes from the French uh, Cybersecurity Agency, which is the ANSI. So this guide satisfies all the requirements we, we uh, Mathieu just told you about. So uh, we'll, we won't go into all the requirements, of course, because it's uh, it's uh, quite big, but it's only 100 pages, so I strongly encourage you to have a look at the full document, and it will give you a really good idea on how to secure your Linux devices. But uh, today we'll show the structure of the document and some of the main principles that are, uh, that are present in it. So the document is structured around four, di four different levels of security, which will... Uh, uh, be targeted at different systems. So you have the minimal level of security, which is in red here. It will apply to any Linux device. So it can be uh, custom uh, uh, IoT gizmos, uh, which are not really critical, to the very highest levels of security, like CPATH, which, is, uh, re which runs in a critical infrastructure, which is electricity. So for uh, CPATH, for instance, we will need to, to meet all the requirements of all the four levels. And we also will be covering, so the, the guide covers many topics which are very uh, complete uh, and should ensure security on your whole Linux device. So it talks about the compilation flag, the partitioning and the file system permissions, the kernel configuration as well as the user configuration, uh, how services should be isolated or hardened, uh, the size of your image and what you will install or not in it, and of course network isolation and firewalling. So here's what a requirement looks like. So first you have a paragraph, which is here on the top, that will introduce the requirement and give you principles on why it will be needed. Then you have the actual requirement. So here we have the number 57. Uh, you see uh, in the squares the levels of security it applies to. So here this is a quite important requirement because it will target any device above the intermediate level of security. And so as we can see, it just tells us that uh, the sudo command should only be uh, allowed to be run for sudo users who are part of the sudo group. So uh, we, because this is quite a simple requirement, and that's one of the showcases of the ANSI BP28, you also have a proposed implementation, which is uh, here shown as the file permission of the sudo binary. Uh, so most of those, te uh, those requirements can be easily tested through shell commands. So uh, we do that in CPAS through Kukinia. 
and it produces uh, a test report that uh, that runs uh, some very simple shell uh, tasks and links them to the requirements on the ANSI BP Node 28. And because uh, CPATH may run in other countries, we want the test to easily be linked with other uh, requirements from other governments, ag cyber agencies. So we developed a, a, a companion tool that produces a compliance matrix and it will link our CPATH test to any uh, re re Linux requirements from other guidelines. So uh, here you, you see some of them are red, but it was in early development, now they should all be in green, of course. So we look uh, into some different kinds of uh, requirements. So of course, I won't be into uh, going into uh, all of them. So uh, uh, again, please read the, uh, the requirements. Um, so some requirements will be quite easy to implement and to test. Mostly, it will be the requirements uh, which come with uh, direct implementation uh, suggestions. So here we have the requirement about the YAMA module. Uh, the YAMA module is a kernel module that will forbid the use of ptrace. So ptrace, as you may, may know, is a system call that allows a process to debug another process so it can uh, inspect its memory, for instance, as long as it's run from the same user. But that would uh, break the principle of isolation between processes, so we want to disable that. So that's done through uh, having the security YAMA module loaded and configured. So here, the requirements give us uh, what we should put on the command line of the kernel and the CCTL uh, parameters to pass to the module to validate uh, this requirement. So because we have an implementation, uh, it's a uh, suggestion, we can easily implement it, but also test it very easily. Some requirements will require a bit more thinking. For instance, uh, this one, which is the first requirement, uh, is about minimizing uh, your services. So of course, to be uh, secure, you want to limit the surface of attack. And to do that, you have to uninstall every package that is not strictly required by your application. And as you can see, this requirement uh, is, applies to all security levels, so it should really be done on all your de the devices you are developing. And so it's easy to understand, but to implement it, you really need to think about uh, what are my critical and essential services and remove everything else. So the implementation here is, of course, not given. But once you have made that work of, uh, of selecting the, the minimal packages, you can easily run a test that will ensure that uh, you are verifying your requirements. So for instance, if you are running a Debian distribution, you can check uh, through IPT that no other package was installed. And then you can have a regression test. And if another developer in the future adds a new package, uh, you will be notified that uh, it is not part of the minimized image, so you'll have to think if it's necessary or not. And finally, uh, some requirements will be really about just principles. Uh, they don't have an implementation given, and it's really also very hard to test. So here we have one of the most important principles, which is defense in depth. So it covers, uh, it tells us that we should use authentication whenever necessary for any critical operations. It also tells us that we should log security events and alerts on our system, and also partition and isolate all services, as well as hardening all configurations. So of course, this is very broad, so you can write many tests to partially verify that you uh, comply with this requirement. Uh, but the idea here is really to, to give the reader, uh, to put the reader in the mindset of security on Linux devices. So of course, you don't want to do what's presented on the right here. So this is the usual uh, Debian or Yocto or whatever configuration on Linux. So everything runs as root. And for instance, for systemd services, if you don't specify your user, it will run as root. So of course, that's not isolated. One could also try to think about why, why is it important that something not, does not run as root. For instance, in an embedded device, we often have an application that uh, has access to all the sensitive data because usually embedded devices do just one task. So why would it even matter uh, that my application isn't root because it already has access to the sensitive data? 
And you should uh, indeed run it as root because, for instance, it would allow the application to also, for instance, manipulate the partitions or the update system. So an attacker could easily uh, implant a backdoor in your system. So a vulnerability that happens now could become a vulnerability that is backdoored uh, for uh, the future updates. So um, here's a quick, quick recap of the principles of security that you should apply to your device. Uh, you should minimize the features and the privileges of all your applications. You should isolate and partition the network. In CPATH, uh, we go as far as virtualization, so every application is running in a dedicated VM, so it helps us, it helps us greatly reduce cross-contamination of uh, cybersecurity breaches. Uh, you should also uh, harden all your configurations, enable all the security features that do not break your application. You should, of course, log any events and, of course, update as regularly as possible. So, Mathieu, about hardening. Yeah, and now we will see how we harden uh, CPaaS on both Debian and Yocto. So, as I said before, uh, CPaaS will run a top uh, Debian or a custom distribution made by Yocto. Yocto and Debian differ in philosophy. On Yocto, everything is rebuilt from source, and you can uh, basically uh, change and edit everything you want. And the opposite, uh, on Debian, we relied on the pre-built, uh, on build uh, package binary, no, on build binary package uh, provided by the Debian Matt Martins. And we can on only uh, configure the, uh, the runtime configuration, uh, configuration files, and so on. This is illustrated uh, by the schema here. In blue, uh, you can, uh, this is what you, we can modify. On the Yocto part, you, you can see you can modify everything. And on the Debian part, we can only modify uh, configuration. In yellow, this is what is done by the Debian maintainers. To illustrate the, that, uh, this is an example for uh, how hardening the ECH connection, ECHD daemon. On Yocto, uh, we, we made um, our own uh, SSHD config, and we replaced the original SSHD uh, config by our uh, configuration during the building uh, step. On Debian, we keep the SSHD uh, default configuration, but we add uh, uh, our own hardening uh, fragment, which will uh, override the default configuration in, inside the ECHD config.d. At the final, at final, the configuration is uh, identical uh, in the Yocto and Debian. Um, now we will see uh, another uh, requirement, uh, requirements. This is uh, how we minimize the, the package we install. Uh, due to the different philosophy, uh, we can in Yocto uh, configure a bit more how uh, select the, the package we want. Because on Debian, we can only select a package, remove package we want, want install additional package, but uh, we can not uh, edit the, the dependency <coughs> and how the package is built. On Yocto, we can uh, modify the configuration uh, during the build time, and we can uh, unselect unwanted dependencies. To illustrate that, uh, uh, we will check how we install uh, curl. This is basically uh, a command to, to, to download uh, HTTP page and parse HTTP, HTTP page. Uh, this is how it is done in Debian. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, dependencies, uh, WE dependencies, for example, uh, LD, LDIP or SASL. Uh, we do not need it on CPAS, but uh, we can't remove it. At the opposite, on, on Yocto, Yocto provides uh, some uh, package config to tweak the, the configuration. For instance, uh, there is a package for config for uh, LDIP. If we do not enable uh, this package config, uh, curl will not, will not be compiled with the support of LDIP, and the dependency will not be installed. There is uh, also uh, the extra conf, the, uh, an extra e, e, OE conf we can be used to, to um, change uh, all the parameters passed to the configure uh, command. It, 
can be also used to, to compile a, a package with only the, the options we want. The other main point uh, we see here between Debian and Yocto, it is uh, the kernel configuration. On Yocto, the kernel configuration is, uh, on Debian, sorry, the kernel configuration is done by uh, Debian, by the Debian team. We just uh, use it, and we, we can keep, we can change the kernel parameter and the, the other uh, size control uh, parameter, but we cannot edit the, the configuration. So the, the, the hardening part is only done on kernel parameter and sys control. On Yocto, we can we, we define uh, our own uh, kernel configuration, so we can apply all the kernel rules we want, and uh, most of the hardening part is done on the kernel configuration. We still have some uh, kernel parameter and sys control, which is uh, set up uh, as uh, debit as the, doing the, the setup phase, the setup step, as it is done uh, with Debian. Uh, to help us uh, writing the configuration, we use uh, BP28 uh, recommendation, but we also rely on kernel safe protection recommendation. Uh, a practical example, how the, the configuration uh, tweak uh, the kernel configuration tweak can impact uh, the implementation. This is a, a recommendation to, to basically uh, harden, uh, harden the kernel with uh, syscontrol. To, to reduce uh, the, the, the curve dump and do not enable the set UID on the curve dump, uh, we can uh, use this syscontrol parameter, we use it on Debian. But on Yocto, we just disable all the curtain feature because we don't need it. So now we'll be talking about monitoring the CPAP security uh, in the long run, and most of those tests are actually done at build time. So uh, as we have seen, uh, the, we, we, there are two main kinds of, Yo of Linux distributions for embedded, those that require compiling from source, like Yocto, and those that fetch pre-built packages like Debian. So on Debian, uh, the Debian team will compile security updates for you regularly as long as you are on a supported uh, branch, but you must be sure to fetch all those updates very, very frequently, otherwise you will accumulate public vulnerabilities that have been fixed upstream. So to keep up, uh, Debian updated, you just need to run apt update very frequently, basically. Whereas in Yocto, uh, you'll have to rebuild your image, uh, and of course, uh, you have the same uh, mechanics to uh, keep the c updated with the community version, so that happens in the layers, so you will want to update your uh, open source layers as frequently as possible, and redeploy your uh, version with updates. So of course, updates are really critical in keeping a Linux system uh, secure. So uh, with Yocto, we, we, we have more responsibility we have, uh, that comes with the flexibility, and we must keep track of the CVEs of uh, all our packages. So that is done through the CVE check BB class, so it's part of Open Embedded Core, and it will give us uh, a file that contains for every package that we have installed the currently known CVEs and whether we are affected by them or not. So this is done at build time, and with, uh, with CPASS, we generate that metadata file with every build and check that no CVE uh, was, uh, was just uh, found out. Uh, so for Yocto, because we also are the one responsible for compiling, uh, we also need to check that the compilation was done properly. So um, you may be aware that uh, tools like GCC uh, give us access to uh, security compilation flags like stack canaries, for example. So stack canaries are uh, a basic mechanism that prevents buffer overflows and allows us to detect them. And there are many other flags as illustrated here in this slide. Uh, so uh, once again, if you are using a Debian, uh, a Debian distribution, that is, uh, we, you can uh, rely on the maintainers to have done the proper compilation and those flags should be enabled. So thanks to the Debian maintainers if there are any in the room. Uh, but if you're on Yocto, uh, you will probably have some BB append patches 
and uh, or maybe you rely on uh, community uh, layers that are not part of Open Embedded Core, so you really want to check that uh, the compilation flags for security were uh, correctly used in your recipes. For instance, if a recipe has a weird make file or redefines the LD flags or whatever, uh, some of those flags may actually not make it into the compiled binary, so that's why uh, we chose to add, add this uh, test. So it's our custom class, which we named Check Hardened Compilation. You can find it, of course, on the Open uh, CPAS uh, GitHub repository. And uh, basically, it will look for every package for binary uh, files. And uh, with the binary analysis tools, it will check if we properly had the security flags enabled. So we, are, we base uh, this class on a, on a check sec uh, script that was available on GitHub as well. The link is uh, down the, below the slide. We have uh, the same uh, mechanism for uh, the kernel configuration. So of course, uh, most of uh, our configuration was hardened through uh, reading the ANSI BP28, which gives uh, many recommendations on what you should enable or not enable in your kernel configuration. Uh, so we have specific tests for that, which are written in Kukinia once again. Uh, but we also do some tests at build time through uh, the a script that was also available on GitHub, kconfig uh, harden check, and it will run just a few more tests on our kernel configuration uh, and uh, give us a bit more yeah, guidance as to what should be enabled or not. So uh, once again, I really encourage you to have a look at the full document and CBP28. There are links uh, to it in our uh, presentation. You will find it in French as well as in English. Uh, it really, um, I, I hope you understood that it was really uh, Linux distribution agnostic. It will apply to mostly all embedded Linux uh, distribution and it will really guide you through the steps to secure your device, even though some principles may be a bit uh, uh, more challenging to approach and will require you to really, redi to really design or, uh, the architecture of your product in a secure way. So feel free also to contact us directly. You have our emails in the slides. And also you can have a look at the CPATH GitHub repositories to see how we implemented the tests and also how we did the implementation of those requirements. It's all done through for Debian and Yocto, so it should give you a good idea on how you can start uh, securing your devices. So with that, I'll thank you, and we have the time for a few questions, I think. Thank you. Um, yeah, you mentioned that you're using a CVE tracker from uh, Yocto. So yeah. how do you post-process them? I mean, the kernel has like 70, 90 unpatched CVEs. So what are you doing with them? Yeah, we just generate the report, and uh, of course, we have to check if, if, to, uh, if we are unpacked by the CVE. And, and how, how do you document that? Do you have a workflow for that? Uh, not yet. Thank you for your very interesting talk. Um, what I haven't heard is whether you tried and what your experiences are using the no recommendations um, setting from Yocto project. Uh, so, so are you speaking about the security guide from the Yocto project? When, 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 so when calling, so there is also um, runtime recommendations in, in um, recipes and you can, um, also, um, at the BitBake, decide whether you want to have the recommendations installed or not. And okay, personally, I made the experience that um, it does not, um, typically it does not end well when you don't install the recommendations because it's getting maybe a very, very thin, what you end up with. So I was wondering why that was not mentioned, maybe because you also made bad experience. Okay, I'm not uh, sure about which recommendations you are speaking. Is it the uh, package recommendation that comes with every package, or is it another feature? It's just a, it's a variable, no underscore recommendations. Okay, I think, it, uh, I think that's, uh, that controls whether you install the R recommend uh, packages, yeah. 
Uh, Mathieu may know if we have that enabled or not. I don't remember. Ah, <laughs> I don't remember. We can check in the, yeah, in the source. Uh, in my Peter? experience, things should work. The uh, R recommends viable usually. Uh, if the maintainers of the recipes have done their job well, the, the package should run without them. It just enables more features. So in theory, you should be able to, and you, you really want to disable that in the case uh, if you want to have a minimized uh, image, unless, of course, you need the features. So my recommendation will be to disable the recommendations and fix what's wrong. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, some of the uh, requirements said should, some said it is recommended, and some said it is uh, a must. So is that on purpose? Is that like a different level of re requirement? Uh, that should be clarified, I guess, at the beginning of the document, which should explain exactly uh, the exact meaning of should, must, and so forth. Uh, so I'll uh, guide you to the, uh, to the document. It should uh, tell you exactly when is a must applied and when should uh, should be applied. All right, thanks. Um, do you have plans to extend beyond Debian and Yocto for maybe people using build root? Uh, because we, we, we choose uh, Yocto um, because it, uh, it is more easy to extend uh, our rules in Yocto by uh, doing our, our own uh, meta uh, layer. And uh, this is what we, we have done with uh, meta CPaaS. Basically, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll add that um, we, uh, we do not plan to add build root for CPaaS, but I think that most of the things we presented today relate, related to Yocto will apply to build root because in, you are in the same environment where uh, you are responsible for building the packages and ensuring that they are built in a secure way. So as we've seen, you want to disable the configurations you don't want and you also want to harden the configuration. So, uh, so even I think you, could, you should have a look at our tests for Yocto, and most of them should also be doable through build root. Even the build time uh, checks should be doable on build root as well. Question over here. Uh, do you have any plans on going uh, beyond the standard and uh, checking for other kernel options introduced by special kernel patches like GR security or uh, if there is a other security and hardening patches for the kernel? Uh, no, we do not apply yet, but uh, if, uh, there is, uh, if someone wants to, to add it, it is possible. Yeah, I think one of the main reasons we could go for that is uh, if another uh, government that uh, where CPAS installation uh, wants to be deployed requires them, of course, we'll probably have to support that. Um, but yeah, the MCBP28 is one recommendation, and of course you can go beyond that. As we've shown, we also have some other recommendations that are already part of the project. So uh, yeah, it should be as secure as possible. So uh, yeah, it, it can be vast to secure your Linux uh, device, but the MCBP28 gives us a, a good first start, let's say. <laughs> Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, there is any automatic tool or mechanism that can check if a running system is uh, aligned with these requirements uh, defined by this normative? Yeah, actually, uh, so most of the compliant, um, compliance matrix uh, you briefly show, show uh, that was briefly showed, uh, runs on at runtime, so you can run it uh, any time to ensure the NCBV28 requirement. So you can see if any if someone did malicious uh, things. Uh, you can also rerun the we, in the CPAS context. We have Ansible to set up some of the rules, so you can rerun Ansible and see if uh, it did reapply some rules, which will show that they were broken. And, but of course, the only test here that we spoke about that won't be available at runtime time are all the build uh, checks, uh, and it's only and yeah we we only defaulted to build the time checks because we couldn't do it at runtime. There's a question in the front. Um, for the other. Um, mm guidelines that you use from other countries, do you also list them? 
in the documentation, maybe for comparison sake? Uh, yeah, for the moment, we only uh, implement uh, the PP28, but uh, it is possible to easily uh, implement other guidelines because uh, all, uh, all things we, we applied, um, one guideline and other are very similar, and uh, uh, all tests are uh, agnostic. You have, we define just an ID, and we have uh, 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 file matrix we match uh, the, re the recommendation uh, and the test ID. So if you want to implement another uh, guideline, uh, you just uh, have to create the matrix and uh, implement uh, what is missing. Okay. Again, thanks for the, this presentation, <laughs> very useful. I have one question regarding the recent uh, 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 screen about the Yocto uh, kernel config uh, check. It, it is uh, re it include also a recommendation for other platform because now it's mentioned x86, ARM and other uh, also included. Uh, yeah. Also already. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it check from uh, different uh, recommendation. It's here on, the, on we see kernel set protection, but there is another and yes. Uh, he checked the, the, the architecture and, uh, and, and the version because which will can differ from the version to another. But uh, there is some some rules uh, we can fail, but uh, you still want, for example, for instance, uh, not to, yeah, here uh, it is a recommendation to disable uh, config modules, but uh, there is. Uh, a lot of reason to, to keep the module uh, on your platform. In, in CBAT, we, we have to, to keep it because uh, there, there is uh, some module we can build a uh, load later, like uh, TPDK, for instance. Okay, any okay. other questions? No? Then uh, thank you very much.